Hey everybody, Metal Fro here, back with another video. Um, thought I'd cover a handful of vinyl albums that were part of the recent acquisitions that I got here in the past few weeks, uh, mostly leading up to and the weeks since Christmas. So I thought I'd cover some of that stuff today. So, first of all, this is Meat Puppets, Up on the Sun. This is a 180 gram vinyl reissue of what was the band's third album. And uh, this originally came out in 1985. Um, and this is a 2011 issue on um, Meat Puppets Music, which is kind of the band's private imprint, I believe. Um, the band was a three piece when they recorded this. And. Um, of course, most people are familiar with the Meat Puppets because of, or I should say most people who know mainstream rock music are familiar with them from uh, their 1994, I believe, hit um, um, Backwater from the Too High to Die album, which I have on CD. But anyway, uh, a lot of their early material is a lot less well known. And uh, this is one that I saw here not too long ago and thought, you know, I should probably pick this up because I'm a fan. I've got a couple of Meat Puppets albums on CD and so I thought this would be a, a fun one to have. Um, I don't have any other 180 gram vinyl, at least not any that's specifically stamped that. I do have some other vinyl that's weighty, but uh, anyway, nothing that <clears throat> specifically says 180. So as you can see, nice little paper insert with uh, what I believe is probably original artwork and real basic um, sort of typewriter lyrics on the back, which I'm guessing this replicates the original. I've not seen an original copy of the album anywhere. Uh, I've never owned one, so I'm only uh, just guessing about this. But as you can see, just a standard white vinyl, very basic, um, but still very cool. You know, again, it's 180 grams, so it's awful weighty. Um, nice, nice vinyl. Um, good stuff. I sounds fantastic. I kind of question whether or not <clears throat> uh, a band like the Meat like Meat Puppets and their early material, which was kind of decidedly lo-fi in both sound and um, approach, really needs to be on 180 gram vinyl. Um, you know, for the perfect clarity and quality, since the material itself uh, probably wasn't recorded on. You know the highest grade equipment that you could buy, but I still think it's a great uh, a great reissue. Um, of course, I'll be on the lookout for an original copy at some point. But uh, in the meantime, this is cool to have, and uh, it's a good little album. Um, not quite as refined as some of their later stuff, like Forbidden Places or Too High to Die, but good stuff. <clears throat> All right, up next, something I was very excited to get. Um, this is the Iron Maiden, uh, latest Iron Maiden album, The Final Frontier. Uh, this is the, uh, double LP gatefold edition. Uh, it did come with the plastic, so I'll go ahead and pull this out of the sleeve. Uh, so you can see, you know, the full front cover. And then here's the, uh, back cover. And then, of course, the nice gateful design with uh, cool artwork. This is probably some of the best artwork that the band has had uh, since Derek Riggs kind of quit doing art for them. Um, it is still a bit artificial in places and of course some folks don't like the sort of alien uh, reinterpretation of Eddie but I think it's pretty cool and uh, I really like that. And then of course the vinyl itself um, is a double, it's a double LP, so of course you've got nice inserts with artwork and lyrics. So there's the first insert and both of, of the vinyl, both vinyl in this edition are um, picture discs. So I'll go ahead and pull this all the way out so you can see. Here is um, <clears throat> side, I guess this is side two on the first disc, and then side one 
is a nice, lovely representation of the cover art itself. And we'll take a look at the insert and the vinyl here for um, disc two. Again, the nice alien eddy representation and uh, sort of space, planet, sun type of graphics and then lyrics, of course. And the second vinyl, again, is picture disc. So side three is this nice sort of silhouette of the band and side four is this sort of cool um, logo piece with the sort of alien uh, uh, like a cartoonish version of the alien eddy um, circling this moon so very neat package very glad to have this on vinyl um, really nice I think it's a really nice package. Obviously, Maiden fans uh, like myself who are also fans of vinyl um, should be looking at one of these. This is the U.S. release through um, <coughs> through Universal Music. I don't know that... I don't think all pressings of this package are picture disc. Um, so the U.S. version is, or at least this one was... Um, so that I would obviously look for that if you can because it's a nice package like you see and uh, a real real good collector piece to have Moving on we have another gatefold um, This is the latest album by theocracy as the world bleeds um, as you saw in an earlier video I have the picture disc uh, version of the Mirror of Souls album, the group's second overall. And um, so this is the third album, the first that's fully realized as a band rather than just Matt Smith kind of helming the project pretty much by himself. So I'll take this out of the out of the sleeve so you can see. I need to get myself some gatefold vinyl sleeves, but really nice package, fantastic artwork uh, by the same gentleman who did the last cover. Um, that would be Felipe Macado Franco, uh, who has also done work for a number of other bands. But uh, you know, you got the front cover, the back cover, which, apart from the layout a little bit due to the vinyl, is essentially the same as the CD version, which I pre-ordered at the same time as this, uh, or I shouldn't say pre-ordered, but ordered. And then again, it's a gatefold, so you get the nice picture of the band and uh, lyrics and credits in there. Um, the <clears throat> vinyl itself is just a standard standard black vinyl. But it does have nice nice labels. So you can see there's side A and side B. So they look pretty nice. And I'll also pull out the other the other one here briefly so you can have a look at it. This is a fantastic album. Um, I think at this point, I think it's Theocracy's strongest release. I really, really liked Mirror of Souls. Um, it is probably my favorite progressive metal album of 2008 by a hair so just slightly beating out Menahem's Angel, Angels and Shadows um, but this album I think here's side C and then side D as you can see but this slightly beats out um, <clears throat> or I guess this album I think is is even stronger than Mirror of Souls because the songwriting is a little bit more consistent across the board, um, despite the fact that there's no 22-minute epic. Uh, you know, the first track, I Am, is um, like 11 minutes long. And so this is just a great album, great songs. Um, I got a digital pre-release copy um, due to my affiliation with um, 
connecting music, and so I played it for weeks so I could review it and then, of course, do airplay for my show. The one thing I'll say is I appreciate Alterium Records moving beyond just picture discs. Um, I like picture disc releases, and this would have been cool as a picture disc as well, but I like the fact that they're moving into actual sleeves for their vinyl rather than just sending them in a plastic sleeve. But I will say that the quality of the sleeve itself is kind of low. Um, it's, I, you, it's kind of hard to tell from the video, but you can see it's really bendy and, I mean, it's very flimsy. So I would say bravo to Ulterium for moving in this direction, but you still got a little ways to go, guys. You need to buy nicer sleeves because this album is way too good to put in a chancy sleeve like this. So anyway... But still a good good vinyl release to have. Um, obviously something that fans of the band, who are fans of vinyl, once again, are not going to want to miss out on because it's fantastic. In addition to the um, As the World Bleeds album, I also got the Wages of Sin 7-inch. Um, of course, Wages of Sin was available on the Japanese release of Mirror of Souls as well as the picture disc vinyl version. So I've actually had this track for a while now, but I like this a little seven inch package because it has this song, but on side B, it has another track called Theacropella, which is sort of a medley of, a vocal medley of choruses and parts from other Theocracy songs. So it's kind of a neat little piece, um, something that's interesting to have. You know, it's a standard <clears throat> standard black vinyl. Uh, this one actually is 45 RPM instead of 33, like a lot of little 7-inch records these days. And so um, so it plays more like a, an old 45 traditional uh, vinyl single. So anyway, very cool to have that one. Um, Fortunately, I picked that up a little cheap. Ulterium Records, unfortunately, prices their stuff a little high. I think because of the because of the shipping, you know, their European-based label and theocracy is from the United States, and so it's a little harder to get some of the stuff because it's just more expensive. But um, fortunately, the distributor that I bought this through had it priced right. All right, moving on, we have the vinyl reissue of The Crucified's second and final album, The Pillars of Humanity, or I should say second and final um, proper studio album. Uh, the band had recorded some demos and other things before that, but this is the second um, studio album that they released. Um, the original uh, on Ocean Records had sort of this interesting businessman meets demon kind of concept. Um, and a lot of people really like the original cover art. I'm not particularly a fan. I really like this artwork, however. This is um, based on a design from one of the early t-shirts that they had, and so I really like this, uh, this cool design that you can kind of see with this sort of jester character looking over the world with all of this stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> this came out via Veritas Vinyl, uh, this is a nice package here. Comes in this sort of adhesive sleeve, and so kind of get a better look at the at the package itself. There's the front and then the back. Now this is in four different pressings. Um, the initial pressing, which is a hundred copies, is um, a kind of a marble red vinyl, and then there's three other colors. There's a black. Um, and I can't remember what the other two colors are right offhand. The insert is kind of cool. has uh, tattoos, pictures of these tattoos of crucified logos, you know, the, the cr nail cross nails and then the crown of thorns. So that's pretty cool. Must, you know, fan submissions. And then, of course, the uh, flip side has the lyrics and credits and so forth. Um, this is... Vinyl is based on the remastered version of the release, I believe, which came out uh, via 
<clears throat> Tooth and Nail Records um, in 2009, and then of course um, also was available on the Crucified Collection CD set. But as I said, the first pressing, the first hundred copies is this marble red vinyl. Um, so this is side A. Fantastic looking vinyl as you can see in the light. It's really nice looking. Um, this is hand numbered. I got 58 out of 500. So they're doing it based on all 500 copies. But only the first hundred are this marble red. I thought I was going to be late in the game because I ordered it way after it was announced um, and actually ended up getting a low number so I'm not sure if the demand for this has been lower or people have been ordering different colors because they wanted that or what but highly recommend this. This is a fantastic package. It's a good album anyway um, and if you're a fan of The Crucified or you're a hardcore or metal fan at all and you like vinyl, this is something that you should be seriously considering. And then of course, on the flip side, the B side of the vinyl has that nice cross nails and Crown of Thorns logo that you saw on all the tattoos. So fantastic, um, fantastic package. Great, uh, great vinyl release from Veritas. Very pleased to have this. And I would like at some point to collect all four colors um, <clears throat> you know but of course that's all that all comes down to money so if I can afford to do so at you know at some point here I'll probably probably try and do that but in the meantime it's great just to have the initial pressing of, of the red marble vinyl and awesome to have that um, this historic release and you know, classic release in my collection. I still don't own an original CD copy because I've never found one inexpensively enough that I thought I wanted to spend the money on it. But uh, of course, I have the the collection that came out that has the remastered version, and now I own the vinyl. So, last but not least, is the um, Vinyl Remains or Blacklight Records uh, reissue of. Slekvok, I think I pronounced that right. Um, it is the war that plagues the lands, and this is a it's a good release. It's kind of hard to see because the cover itself is fairly dark, but uh, it's got this um, big armored soldier with uh, the falcon on his arm, which is kind of the group's um, unofficial mascot, I guess if if you will, the, the sort of falcon. Um, and uh, this is a nice little package. I, I really like the the way this is set up. Um, the back cover is really difficult to see. You can't really make anything out. Um, but the insert is nice. It has uh, lyrics and artwork on the one side. And then on the other side, of course, is an um, advertisement for their new album, the uh, A Forlorn Throne, which I'm told is a bit of a shift in style. I don't own a copy yet. Um, I just have this. Um, and this is actually my only copy of The War That Plagues the Lands. I do not yet have the CD version. Again, because it's it's kind of expensive to get a hold of these days. <clears throat> One thing that I thought was cool about this is instead of the standard white paper sleeve, it's a black paper sleeve. So, kind of neat. Um, but the real draw here, other than the fact that it's on vinyl, is the vinyl itself, which is this really nice sort of opaque brown marble. It's difficult to t it's difficult to see here in the light, but it's a really beautiful dark sort of gray brown marble. Um, and so there you can see the the first side, and then here on side B is the sort of new logo that they adopted for the current album and the uh, sort of Falcon design there. So great vinyl package. Um, I haven't listened to it yet on vinyl because I'm waiting until I can get myself a new um, a new player. My, my player that I have right now is kind of decrepit and 
um, I've already worn out the the needle on it and I can't find a replacement um, for the stylus or the needle because it's kind of an off brand and so I'm looking at actually getting a a higher quality turntable here at some point and then hopefully with a, a higher quality cartridge and, and stylus so that I can have much more vinyl enjoyment. So anyway, that's all I've got for my latest modern vinyl picks and I'll be back with more videos soon. Thanks.